<clears throat> Hi there, it's, uh, it's Glenn here. I'm waiting at U of Ottawa Station. There's a train coming in a moment. I'm just coming from City Hall. It is, it is about 10 to 8. We just wrapped up a six hour Transit Commission meeting. We're talking about all the issues that are plaguing buses and trains right now. Uh, we got Attention. a lot of answers, a lot Last of information. Still a few things that are not clear, but uh, it's a start. Also, early in the day, we had the tabling of the 2020 budget. So the first look at some of the, uh, well, where the budget's going to be focused uh, over the whole city, all the different city programs and services, but in particular transit as well. I uh, wanted to give you a quick update of what we heard today. Um, I'm not sure where to start. Uh, on the trains, the lingering issue on the trains and the issue that's causing most of the delays on the trains that you're seeing in the morning are around a computer system called TCMS. It's kind of the, the brain, the controller of the train system. I'm gonna hop on the train here and hopefully not annoy my fellow passengers too much. So the issue that's causing delays on the train right now is, is mostly around TCMS. It's a computer issue, a software issue. Uh, Rideau Transit Group and Alstom and all their partners are troubleshooting this, but they're still not quite sure what's causing it. There's no root cause. Uh, they're obviously going through troubleshooting and testing, but this is what's causing the issues on the train. Uh, the city is withholding any maintenance payments to RTG, Rideau Transit Group. Uh, we would normally be paying them $4 million to $5 million a month, and we haven't paid them a cent, and they're not West meeting the performance standards that are set in the contract, so we will not West be paying them Bay, until the train is working reliably. Uh, so, Next station, Rideau. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, when you hear that you've got repeated Washington issues with the train, and there's still not a clear solution that's very concerning. Uh, I suppose it's positive that this week there have been no delays in the morning, the afternoon. It's been a very smooth commute. Uh, we, we have to hope that'll continue and that a solution is found soon. On the buses, uh, again, it's it's a lot of the delays on the buses are have been due to the problems with the train. That accounts for some of it. It really looks like the root cause of the bus delays. You know, what we promised people was once LRT launches, um, these issues of, of chronic canceled buses, late buses, unreliable bus service would come to an end. It's been a month in since LRT launched and clearly we're not seeing that. There are still ongoing issues with reliability on the buses. One of the root causes it looks like is OC Transpo when they planned out this, these new routes, they underestimated the time the buses would need to get to their starting point. So you're getting a case where, where the bus uh, takes longer to get from the garage out to the start of the route in Stittsville in the morning, or when they're switching from run, one route to another, there's not enough time built in to deal with traffic, to allow the driver the time he or she needs to Rito reset station. and recover. Um, so this is a, obviously a problem that needs to be fixed. Rito. OC Transpo tracks, Rito. GPS, Rito. start times, delay times, and they're gradually trying to make fixes. The expectation though is that we will not see a major improvement to that until January 1st. That's when the new schedules and the new timetables are coming for the buses. They're adding in more uh, turnaround time, more downtime uh, to allow to, to basically fix this problem. Um, you might have heard last week there was an announcement that OC Transpo as of Monday has added 40 additional buses to the fleet. So we got a little bit of info about how those are being deployed. They're being deployed across the city. Uh, they're going to routes where we know that there are capacity issues, where there needs to be another run to meet the demand for the number of people. Um, they are using them as spare buses, so parking them out in Canada, Smithville, Barhaven, Orleans, the outer suburbs, so that if a bus breaks down, there is another bus ready, avail readily available as a spare. Um, the other thing that those spares are being used for, uh, Stittsville to, uh, pardon me, for Stittsville to benefit Stittsville, they're running a spare bus from uh, Tunney's to Eagleson, a special bus to serve the park and ride. I know there's a lot of Stittsville residents using that Eagleson park and ride. So they recognize there's a need for more service to that park and ride. That's one of the many ways that these 40 buses are being used for. They are evaluating how that goes this week and over the next few days and then they're going to be making permanent additions and changes to the schedule in the short term. So between now and January 1st to alleviate uh, the choke points in the system, uh, where they're seeing breakdowns, where they're seeing capacity issues. So it will get a little bit better, but I'm really, based on what we heard today, not expecting to see a real significant improvement 
until January 1st. Um, you know, what that means is we're, we're seeing a ton of buses that are, you know, sometimes on time, but sometimes five minutes late, 10 minutes late. And it doesn't sound a lot, but when you've been waiting a ton of you know, for 20 or 30 minutes for a bus and it's another five or 10 minutes late, that's an extremely long wait. Um, we also got updates on improvements being made to the stations. For example, at Tunnies, they're actually starting this week to build some canopies to protect you from the snow and the rain, so that's a good thing. Uh, there's improvements being made to uh, station design and flow that's ongoing, so a lot of these ongoing things. Uh, I'm going to share on my website a link to the PowerPoint deck that was presented, 88 slides showing what's happened, how it's being fixed, uh, what the plan is going forward. There's a lot of work to be done. It's uh, not, a, uh, not a good situation. I think everybody around the council table, everyone around the commission table today uh, acknowledge that. This is not the level of service people were promised. It's not the level of service that we've entered into a contract with Rito Transit Group to, to deliver, and uh, it, it needs to be fixed. It's the top priority of the city right now, and uh, uh, obviously all of your feedback that you've been sending us has been useful in identifying the problems and working on solutions. Um, I introduced a motion, and I was glad to get support from my colleagues, uh, around regular reporting. So we talk a lot about accountability for what's going on here. One of the gaps that I have as a councillor and as a transit commissioner is we don't actually have numbers month to month to measure against. So how do we know if we're doing well, if we're doing poorly, if we're getting better, if we're getting worse. So I was glad to get the support from my council colleagues to actually uh, tell OC Transpo they need to be delivering us a set of metrics that tell us about reliability, that tell us about the number of open issues. And so we at least have a, a benchmark or a, a measurement so we know month to month um, how OC Transpo is actually doing. So there's a lot of work to do. Uh, lots else going on at City Hall. Maybe I'll do a, a Facebook Live or something on the weekend and bring you up to speed. But um, more to come and uh, welcome your feedback anytime. The best way to send me feedback about bus or train issues is by email, glenn.gower at ottawa.ca. We are sharing all of that with um, OC Transpo. Uh, we're finding solutions whenever we can. Some of them we can fix right away. Some of them are going to take a little longer. But we are listening to you and we will get this fixed. Just trying to see where we are now. We are pulling out of the tunnels. We must be coming up to Pabisi Station at Labret Flats. Uh, it is pretty late, so we're 7.58 p.m., which means the connection to Stittsville will probably be brutal. And I'm gonna call my, uh, my wife and ask her to pick me up from one of the uh, park and ride stations out closer to Canada. Uh, we gotta get that fixed too. Anyhow, um, have a good night and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.